half in the bag. Batman? I keep hitting enter, but I can't close this fucking window. <laughs> Computers, am I right? Oh. Lightning fast VCR repair, this is Mike. How can I help you? Ah, uh, it's Mr. Flinkin. Where the hell are you two? You're supposed to be fixing my VCR. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, t today's our day off, Mr. Plinkett. We were just there yesterday, remember? No, I don't remember anything. Well, why aren't you here today? I told you, it's our day off, and on our day off, we're gonna go see Terminator Dark Fate. I thought that just came out, like last year, bombed. No, no, Mr. Plinkett, that was Terminator Genesis. That bombed here, so they remade it. It's called Terminator Dark Fate. Dark Fate? Yeah, Dark Fate. Dark Fate? Oh, oh wait, wait, so what is that? Is that Terminator? Six? Yeah, technically this would be the sixth Terminator film, but in actuality it's Terminator 3. What do you mean it's Terminator 3? I thought Terminator 3 was Terminator 3. Well, there was a Terminator 3 called Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. And then there was a movie called Terminator Salvation, and then there was Genesis. But now they made this one, and this is actually a sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So Terminator 6? Is the sequel to Terminator 2? Yeah. Well, then what is Terminator 3? Well, t Terminator 3 had it had John Connor in it, and uh, Sarah Connor, the character was- Wait, that's John Connor in Terminator 3? But that's a different guy. Yeah, by the time they made Terminator 3, Edward Furlong was too old and bloated, so they got a guy named Nick Stahl to replace him. Oh, so that guy in Terminator 3 is also John Connor. Yes, it's John Connor portrayed by a different actor. And so John Connor's off the grid, and, and he meets uh, uh, Claire Danes, who is a veterinarian. And they fall in love, but a lady Terminator is sent back in time to kill John Connor again, even though the future didn't happen. But somehow a lady Terminator came back through time and another Arnold comes back to protect him. Wait, wait, there's, 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 a, there's a third Arnold? It's another Arnold, but this time he's, he's also good. Oh, wait, wait, what about that Arnold in the fourth one? The Arnold in the fourth one would be a bad one because that's Terminator Salvation. So that's another bad Arnold? Yes, well, he's only in it at the end and it's a CGI Arnold. And who's that guy that that bad Arnold's trying to kill in the fourth one? Yeah, Mr. Plinkett, try to follow along. I'm trying to follow along. Terminator Salvation, that takes place in the far future, where John Connor is currently leading the resistance. Wait a minute, that's John Connor? But that's a different guy. Yes, this time John Connor is portrayed by Christian Bale. Batman? Yeah, Batman. And we meet young Kyle Reese, played by Anton Yelchin. Wait, that's Kyle Reese? But that's a different guy. Yes, and uh, uh, in Terminator Salvation, Claire Danes is, is replaced by Bryce Dallas Howard. You may remember her from such hit films as Jurassic World and Jurassic World, Jurassic World Park. <laughs> so Claire Danes isn't Claire Danes from Terminator 3, but she's a different Claire Danes in Terminator Salvation? Right. Okay, so then that happens in the future and then we get to the next Terminator. I'm not yes. clear what happens in the next Terminator at all. Yeah, in, in Terminator Genesis, uh, they send an Arnold back to 1984. Basically, it's like the original. Oh, that's another Arnold? Yeah, it's now now it's the original bad Arnold. Oh, so it's not another Arnold. It's the same Arnold. It's, it's, it's not the original different Arnold. Arnold. From T1, from Terminator 1. Oh my God, my brain hurts. And he, he raises uh, Sarah Connor from being a little girl. Wait, that's Sarah Connor? Yes. But that's a different girl. Kyle Reese also comes back. That's Kyle Reese? That's Kyle Reese. But that's a different guy. It's a different guy. Michael Bean would be way too old to play Kyle Reese. Uh, oh, uh, original or Arnold that got sent back to the 1970s to raise up uh, young Sarah Connor. Him and Sarah Connor build a time machine in a sewer. What? They, they discover that, that John Connor himself has now traveled through time. Wait, that's John Connor? 
but that's a different guy. Yes, John Connor is now played by Jason Clark, who looks nothing like Christian Bale. Uh, and then, so John Connor is now a, a Terminator. He's a super, super advanced human hybrid Terminator with nanobite technology in him. Why did why, 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 why did John Connor get the time machine in the first place? I don't remember. His John Connor solution to everything is to send more Arnolds back in time. You think with all this decides to go himself? What? What did you say? What was your I'm idea? Saying, I'm saying John Connor's solution to every problem in this franchise has been to send Terminators back in time. Why don't they all just go back in time? Why don't they just go back to the time of dinosaurs? Wait, is that how Claire Danes ended up in Jurassic World? Mr. Plinkett, this, this conversation's become far too confusing. In fact, I wish I could go back in time and not answer the phone. What? I gotta go take my brain medicine so I can understand the Terminator franchise. I hear you, brother. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Jay, let's go see Terminator Dark Fate. Oh, I think all the vodka's gone, Mike. God damn it. What am I gonna put in my crystal head? How about this? What is that? Why, it's some kind of Romulan food pack ration. Oh. It's from the hit TV series, Star Trek Picard. Wow, that looks like a... Oh! Wow, that looks like a, like a screen used prop. Yeah, it is. How the hell did you get that? I guess it might be worth something someday. Somewhere out in space, a Romulan child is starving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smells like an open grave. Oh, what's this? There's so many new things on the desk. What is what is this other item here? Oh, that's our Terminator Dark Fate poster. We got it as a consolation prize for seeing the movie. And you know what's kind of funny too is, is since we're gonna talk about Terminator Dark Fate, it's a skull. It, it, like a metal skull with the red eyes that mm. the, 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 the T-800 looked like, yeah. which was created by Skynet. And then coincidentally, Legion, a completely different AI, also created Terminators that look pretty much identical. They created the exact same thing. I guess it's just the natural evolution of an AI, you know, just, just, uh, just metal robot skeletons with red eyes. It's, it's just a well, it wouldn't be a, a Terminator sequel if it didn't completely ignore the themes of Terminator 2. No fate but what we make. Never mind. <laughs> Whoops. Mike, what did you think of Terminator The Force Awakens? <laughs> B minus. <laughs> slash C plus. Well, you got to grade it on two things as just a movie that you can just watch and as a Terminator 2 sequel. Okay, first of all, the Terminator franchise is fucked beyond recognition. That's why I can't get horribly upset about this, even though a lot of the connections are awful. I just, uh, it's, yeah. Th this it doesn't is matter anymore. This is very uh, paralleled with that Halloween reboot, because you got an old white lady and uh, six sequels that they just skipped over yeah. and said they don't exist. because that, that one was a direct sequel to Halloween 1. Yes, they skipped all those they sequels. They skipped Halloween 2, Halloween 3, which didn't have anything to do with Michael Myers, but then Halloween 4 with the little, little girl, Jamie. Jamie. And then Halloween 5 and 6, and then it's Halloween in Space, and then Halloween with Buster Rhymes. Yes. Uh, so that was, that was the progression. They just skipped it all, and that's basically what they did here. They went from Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and went right to Terminator Deepfake. And I think Terminator Genesis, I don't remember much of it anymore, but I think that ignored Terminator 3 and Terminator Salvation? But it's, yeah, someone goes back in time, Terminator goes back in time to kill a future leader of the Resistance, and then someone else comes back in time to protect them. 
It's the same thing. Those crazy bastards, they did it again. Right. Well, ter Terminator Genesis was like, yeah, an attempt to fix the franchise because they 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 went back in time. Yeah. And he he it was like Kyle Reese and the T800 went back to 1984 and it was like they they recreated the opening mm. of of the original Terminator with uh, Laundry Day, right? Nothing clean, all that. Nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? <laughs> Nothing clean, right? Nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right? But it turns out that Arnold had gone back even further to when Sarah Connor was young and prepared her for the 1984 incident. So she was not just a hapless waitress yeah. working in a restaurant. She was, I'm shooting a big machine gun. And uh, and then, then there's a T-1000 that's also back at the same time in 1984. Yes. Oh, that's right. And he's also wearing a cop uniform for, for no, no reason, reason other than they did in Terminator 2. Right. And then... Uh, and then over, in the years up at, leading up until 1984, Sarah Connor and Arnold, we'll just call him Arnold because he's a good one. He's a good one in all of them now. Um, Terminator 2, they set that up and it was like, oh, it's a clever twist, but now it's always the case. Yeah, her and uh, Amelia Clark, right? Uh, her and Arnold built a time machine in a sewer. A time displacement device. That sent them to 2017, the present day. Are we talking about a Ninja Turtle sequel? That's what this know. sounds like. Uh, so in that timeline, Sarah Connor, you know, is a young woman in 2017, mm -hmm. and, or in the present day. Uh, so then, yeah, I, th they just said none of that happened. Yeah. Um, we, and then we go back to uh, this movie. It's a do-over. It's, it's, it's different than like a soft reboot or a, or a reboot. Yeah. It's, it's a do-over. This needs a new term. We, maybe we call it a jump back mm. um, because Halloween did that yeah. and, and erased, you know, it's like, it's almost like time traveling itself, you know, or like what Skynet does is like eventually at some point you go back and you say, no, this is the sequel. Yeah. Which you can't do because those movies exist and we've seen them. And that's why this movie is more watchable because my lack expectations for Terminator movies is so low. Mm. It's like, eh, this is fine. But if you're watching it as a direct sequel to Terminator 2, the first five seconds of the movie are an embarrassment. <laughs> We're not gonna make it, are we? So John Connor, AKA Edward Furlong, yeah, himself in digital form. And then digitally de-aged Linda Hamilton. Is that, is that what happened? It's not like a cut scene? Oh no. Oh, you think they would shoot this scene for Terminator 2? No, well, no, like... Like maybe unused footage unused, of her? Some unused shots of her on a beach, maybe, but it's god either, damn, it's, is, it's either, is it looking good? Yeah, it looks great. It's either digitally de-aged or completely CG, but yeah, her and, and John Connor is the exact same age as he was in Terminator yeah. 2. I'm guessing they got an actress with like the same like head shape as younger Linda Hamilton and then kind of like morphed a digital face on her. Who knows? But they did it with Arnold, too. I mean, they did that in... Terminator Salvation. They there was a first did it then, and then that, that looked digital. But no, but then there was a digital Arnold in Genesis too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, they the, the aged him in that. Yeah, and that one looked—he was just completely CG. I we, think it was we, like a muscle guy who had the same body type as Arnold, sure. and they just you know, so they don't have to make the whole body. We got to keep digitally de-aging actors because we can't make new movies. <laughs> it looked pretty goddamn good. It looked great, and um, it was the, the first thing you see in the movie is that like. Uh, camcorder footage of Linda Hamilton yes. freaking out and is like, ooh, Terminator 2 is a great, a great movie. Scene. And that's it's a great, great scene. That's a great little rant by her. Yeah. And it's so perfect. And I was like, ah. And then, and then the movie starts. And then the movie starts. <laughs> they're, down, they're down in Mexico, because that's how T2 ends. <laughs> Linda Hamilton has saved her son. They've also stopped the causality loop by melting the original chip, which Miles Bennett Dyson uh, used to create Skynet. Yeah. The it chip the, that exists because of it being, Terminator 1. Because of Terminator 1, yeah. They threw it in the hot lava, and then Arnold says, I got the one more chip, but we got to melt it, and then we stop the bad future from happening. Yeah. We have a very emotional ending. Little Edward Furlong, I order you not to go, and he does the thumbs up. Doo -doo. One of the best endings to, to a sci-fi film. And then in this film, we learn that a bunch of other random Terminators are just being sent. They, I guess at the same time that they sent the Terminator, the T-1000 back in Terminator 2, they just sent other Arnold Terminators back as well. 
It's so stupid. And then he just walks up and shoots him in front of all these people. We're not gonna make it, are we? <laughs> yeah, like a beach resort. Um, and it's like, oh God. Um, okay, well. And then... But I guess, you know what though? Like it didn't negate, the, here's another problem. And I'll talk about the positives too, because there are many things I liked about this movie. But uh, another problem too is that killing the killing of John Connor was utterly pointless at that point. He, it, Arnold, I think, in this movie says something like, I didn't know that Skynet didn't happen. It's based on a wacky misunderstanding, was, like a sitcom. It's like Three's Company. I was still going under my programming to kill John Connor. And so, yeah, it's like, okay, well, it's just, you know, oh, shitty luck for Linda Hamilton. You know, they shot John We just Connor. saved the day. Oh. We're not going to make it, are we? He's no longer going to become the future resistance leader because Skynet doesn't happen. He's just some kid mm -hmm. who's going to grow up to be a car mechanic. Which could be an interesting story if you made that movie about we stopped, like I was going to be the leader. My mom went crazy because she knew the world was ending. We stopped it all. Now what do we do? We're in therapy. Some sort of, yeah, I mean, I'm not even like Coming trying to make a joke, drama, but yeah. some sort of like moral thing or some sort of like psychologically, how do you deal with that? Mm, that would be thoughtful, Jay. That's, that's Terminator and Terminator 2 were thoughtful films. The, the neat thing about Terminator 2 is that there's one Arnold and one T-1000, and they're, they're two sent back in time. That's, it's like, that's all we could send. Yeah. And they, they have to do battle for the fate Because the world's in the post-apocalypse, and we have limited resources. We have limited resources, yeah. and then, but, so now we learn that Skynet sent many Arnolds back over the course of years. Because, Did they say that? I assume yes. it was they just sent them all back at the same time. No, 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 because Re remember, Linda Hamilton... Um, My name is Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor stays in contact via text message with Carl. Yeah. And every couple years, she says, oh, that's he right. would send yeah, him yeah. a text that's and say, whole. with coordinates on where the new Terminators were appearing over time. Yeah. I hunt Terminators. <laughs> I think Skynet said, okay, we'll send one to 1984, one to 1985. Oh, one. so the starting point was the same. Starting point was the same. I think they popped in throughout the timeline just in case the first like three failed. Then there's a fourth one in 1993. Then there's a fifth one in 1997. Just to keep trying to kill John Connor. Um, that almost alone would be enough for a movie. Sure. But then they have to make Terminator 2 again. Would it be, so called, gotta... would it be called Growing Up with Terminator? <laughs> Oh, my high school prom! They're more of a mild inconvenience at my this point. My college graduation! <laughs> John Connor, do not take that diploma. <laughs> I had the birth of my first child, my wedding. Why do you keep showing up at all the important events of my life? Those darn Terminators, that's what it'll be called. Yeah, that'll be great, yeah. <laughs> John Connor's just trying to live a normal life. Yeah. And his, his, his mother, his mother is always around. She shows up at his job, like armed to the teeth. It's working in a cubicle. I thought today might be the day, John. <laughs> no, mom. What's wrong with your mom, dude? <laughs> his coworker is the same kid that he was friends with in Terminator 2, the red haired yes. kid. You salute your shorts. Yeah. For all I know, this could be the plot of the, that Sarah, Cron Sarah Connor Chronicles show that nobody watched. Oh, yeah, there's it might that be too. about that. Who knows? Add that to the canon. Um, <laughs> Everybody forgot about that. Sarah Connor then says, like, she's talking to Grace, the augmented human from the future. And she says, well, Skynet? And Grace is like, what's that? No, no, it's called Legion. Yeah. So no matter what you do, at some point, your Google Alexa device <laughs> will start an apocalypse. Yeah. Someone somewhere on the planet will get AI to a point where it will want to kill humanity and it'll turn itself into endoskeletons. And coincidentally, the robots will look exactly they the same look, in yeah. any scenario. Yeah, I mean, there were some, like, they showed a clip from the future where there was, like, one with, like, tentacle arms and there was some crazy shit going on, but eventually... The like, actual Terminators, they all look the yeah. same. I mean, like, you'd think an AI would be smart enough to just manufacture a biological weapon that would just wipe out humans and, yeah. like, one well, I was day. thinking about that, like during because these we complex have, robots. Well, I was thinking about that during the first, you know, the, it's the same scene from Terminator Two where John Connor's in the hallway of the mall, and then Arnie shows up, and then the T One Thousand shows up, and they fight. There's that same scenario with the new girl in this, who's the new 
you start out thinking she's the new Sarah Connor, but she turns out to actually be John Connor. Um, what's her name? Debbie? Dina? In the movie? Yeah. Um, the most Danny. forgettable. Danny. Danny. The most forgettable character in the movie, which is a problem. But um, that scene happens, and so we have the two robots fighting. And it's just like, with the way things have advanced, technology has advanced, this seems so outdated. Like having this kind of scene. You look at the first Terminator and it's like quaint and cute how Arnold's like looking in the phone book to try yeah. and find Sarah Connor. But that's because it was made in the 80s. That's what we yeah. knew. But the entire concept of the Terminator at this point of, yeah, sending a robot back in time to kill someone just feels really like corny and outdated now. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, they'd create some sort of biological weapon and just nuke everybody. It's like if, if your house was in, infested with mice, right? What do you do? You build lots and lots and lots of tiny robotic mice <laughs> to individually attack them all, right? Yeah. Not put poison out. <laughs> right? That's what people do, yeah. 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 Thousands and thousands of tiny robotic mice that have mice fur over them designed to look like other mice. <laughs> You'd go through that kind of trouble, right? Yeah, that sounds right. When you're dealing with a biological organism that can easily succumb to disease. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're right. Like like a, a man covered in rubber, like a, a robot covered in rubber skin that's kind of kind of looks like a person sent back in time to kill somebody, and he's kind of indestructible. Like not really, but you know, you hit him with a truck, and you know, he'll still get up. And eh. it, it, great concept. And 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 it's perfectly quaint. Mm -hmm. And but now the robots are like out of control, crazy, indestructible, and yeah, you're trying to kill some girl, and yeah. it's like uh, it's overkill. Yes. And the concept has gotten out of control to where it's ridiculous. But this is all. This, see, this is all the things you think about as far as like a, a sequel to a, a great movie. Terminator Two is a great movie. And then now it's just a convoluted mess. Yeah, it's just. Um, but it's still this movie is still the best sequel since Terminator Two. Yes. Which is faint praise, but it's true. I'd have to rewatch Salvation. I remember thinking that that one was okay. There was some kind of motorcycle chase in that that yeah. I thought was pretty neat. A and lot I, of people hated that one. Just I don't I don't know. I, it's it's not a great Terminator movie, but at least it did something different. Yeah. And all these other movies are the exact same thing. It felt more standalone-ish, and I don't remember there being like more time travel-y kind of stuff. I think they're trying to like branch off the franchise. Into, that was supposed to be the start of a new trilogy. Yeah. Um, and then this, it's now it's like, oh, I'll be back and I'm here to protect you and then let's go back to what we know. And yeah. I think the worst part of this whole movie was Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. I, yeah. I really liked Grace, yeah. surprisingly. I, um, uh, I thought she was great. I thought the actress was great. I thought like that idea of just an enhanced human being sent back. And I really liked that vulnerability she had where she could only fight for so long before becoming like ill mm -hmm. and needing medicine and that scene when they bust into the pharmacy like all that stuff that whole like first act when, right off the bat when she rescues the girl from the car manufacturing plant mm -hmm. and they go full like they go full third act right <laughs> right off the gate you the know the big crazy action yes yeah. the big him driving the the pickup truck and it's it's almost it's like the end of T2 when he's well, like smashing the car it's kind of the exact same point in the story as T2 when he's driving the semi and they go into the uh, like aqueducts oh, no i'm talking about the ending when he's also the driving the semi oh oh and he's like <laughs> arnold's driving the little pickup truck and he's like this is the vehicle's That's top true. speed it's that scene, and yeah. he's like they're like smashing and there's a helicopter remember yeah, 2000 yeah. goes up in the helicopter it's like just like a bonkers chase until they end up at the smelting plant yeah um, so that that was like boom and i was like oh no like i loved the movie up until that mm -hmm. up until like linda hamilton showed up yeah and then i was like oh. because i knew that scene was so big i was like i would love that scene at the end mm -hmm. and i was like that's gonna get bigger isn't it that opening action sequence um in the daylight in mexico when Grace is throwing the rebar at the yeah. at the guy and build and up to that. I was like, that's this action scene is so well done, and I was really enjoying it. And I understood what was happening. Her her actions as as an enhanced human were kind of the actions that normal, like your 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 female protagonist who's an action hero would do in re, in a movie. Oh sure, where you're like, like a really on, dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I I I. I 
I'm okay with this because she's an enhanced human. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And then at the end, she wasn't just like, I'm super enhanced. I'm awesome. She's like, ah, I'm going I'm to fucking pass out because I need medicine because yeah. my body's at its limit. The, the characters are all vulnerable. Yes. And I was like, good. that's great. Yeah. Except for the ending. And then well. the halfway through, look, you have a 98-year-old woman <laughs> who's, who's flying out of a plane in a... <laughs> Inside of a Humvee, uh, crashing onto Hoover Dam, in yeah. going into the water. Old people just have to turn slightly <laughs> and they injure themselves. But Mike, Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor is the most badass action hero that's ever exists, so we have to have her do that more. This is a great kick-ass action hero. She's not waiting to be hunted by a Terminator. She hunts them. If she, if that was her scene in the beginning when she showed up and just kind of fired guns at the guy, maybe she just said, "I'm going to stay behind in your cabin." Arnold. <laughs> maybe she, maybe she was used as like a foil for for when uh, the Rev Nine showed up, and she distracted him and then died. Use her in a more believable scenario. Yeah, sure. And then after that, Sarah Connor's gone. Sure. You know, because I don't believe a, a 96 year old woman can do any of that yeah. without becoming horribly injured. And that's, you know. Well, there's that part where her shoulder's dislocated and then Grace puts it back in and then she's just fine again. Yeah. It's like, she should have been like limping around like for the rest of the movie. She could have broken her, her yeah. shoulder by re relocating it. Yeah. Elderly bones break easily. <laughs> um, and so, so I'm not asking for believability in a Terminator film, but I had it. Cause you know, the girl's brother Diego dies and it's sad. It gives her a little motivation. He gets, he gets injured in a car crash, as you would. Yeah. Um, and, and I was, yeah, it gives her motivation. And, and I, I wanted Grace, Danny, fighting Rev-9. Sure. I know that would be exactly Terminator 1, but, but then throwing Arnold in there and trying to, their best to fucking explain why he's there. Oh, God. Uh, it was a robot, and then... Over time, I learned emotions, and he, I he got killed a John Connor, and then over wife. <laughs> he killed John Connor, and then over time, he started to feel bad about it. Yeah, <laughs> fucking robot. Cut to the clip of uh, Kyle Reese in Terminator One explaining uh, the the motivations of a Terminator. That Terminator is out there. I can see you're very upset. It can't be bargained with. They can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. I'm going to help you protect the girl. So they wanted they wanted Arnold from T2. Yes. But Arnold from T2 got dipped into hot <laughs> molten metal. You can't get him back yeah. by any reasonable stretch of the imagination. So, oh, there's just another one. So there's just another one. And that, that's, what, that's what made this movie shitty. Because I, <laughs> I, I can picture, like, Tim Miller directed this, who did Deadpool. And, and, and it was like Tim Miller, story by James Cameron. Oh, there was Cameron like 15 people. people for the so story, yeah. Somebody said, well, you got to have Arnold in it. Yeah. Uh, why don't we bring back Sarah Connor? Well, you got to have a... Uh, a sequence where a plane crashes and everyone floats around in zero G and fights each other. Why? I don't know. Oh, put that in there. Put this in there. Yeah. Put that in there. Put this in. And so I would imagine uh, Tim Miller seems like a smart, clever guy. The Deadpool movies were good. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I would imagine he would be like, mm, are you sure about Arnold calling himself Carl and <laughs> having a loveless marriage <laughs> out of convenience for some poor woman? Yeah. We do not have sex. I, I, she loves me because I listen and I raise her son. What? Yeah. You know, it's weird too. Do you remember when Arnold uh, 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 cheated on, on his wife, Maria Shriver? Yes. With, with their oh. Hispanic maid. Oh. They had a love child and, and he's a grown up dude now. Yeah. Uh, he's like 20 something and just saying, it was eerily That's why if, if there was one more writing credit on this movie, it would have been Arnold, and he would have said, get that out of there. Right. Or I won't be back. Um, but yeah, like, that's the, the central idea, that, like you mentioned, the Grace character. Like, I liked her. It was nice to see, I like that actress, Mackenzie Davis. It was nice what, to see her in kind of a big been? movie. I, I, she, she's, on, she's on a really good episode of Black Mirror, and she was Tully in the movie Tully with Charlize Theron. Where she's oh, like the, yeah. where she's like the I babysitter. Seen Tully. Yes, yeah. yes. She's a good actress, and it was nice to see her in like a big movie like this. And 
she handles it well. I was worried, like you see like the promotional images for this movie and it's like the three women walking and I was like, oh no. They're gonna be like- like. What, you don't support feminist movements, Jay? That, that, well, that's something to mention. I haven't seen any like like Ghostbusters-esque, this, this movie is the new, the first all female action movie. I haven't seen any of that for this movie, which is weird. Yeah. But I saw that like that image and I was like, they're just gonna be like like heartless action heroes with like you were saying, like where they can just do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're not. They're they're given enough material to work with. They try to even give Linda Hamilton some stuff to work with. Um, they all have like vulnerability, and they're all like mm -hmm. they're they're well done. Even though the Danny actress is kind of forgettable, she's the most forgettable character in the movie. And the whole thing is like, she's the crux of the story. I'll be back. When, where was the one where John Connor traveled through time and a T-5000 body from the future inhabited his? Uh, oh, that's Genesis. That's yeah. Genesis, yeah. yeah. And you're, uh, there's, there, what? Some, some, John Connor is a Terminator now, and you're like, I, what are we doing? Some asshole's idea is like, how about John Connor's the bad guy? Yeah. This, this, these movies are like Taco Bell. <laughs> where there's like... The there's, same five ingredients. There's five, same five ingredients, and they just put them in different orders. <laughs> That's the best analogy that you could possibly come up with. I think the fact that this one doesn't get horribly convoluted is what keeps it kind of on the rails. Which, right. again, why it's the best one since T2. Yeah. As faint praise as that is. They're not trying to do some weird, overly complicated, confusing sci-fi plot like yeah. they did with Genesis. With that the... kind of makes it less interesting, though. Like, Genesis goes off the rails, but at least that's, I don't know, is so bizarre, it's kind of interesting. Skynet is almost free. I cannot hold John Connor much longer. This one's just like, hey, like Terminator, here's another one. Yeah, I I'm just know. bigger with more up-to-date action sequences, yeah. which unfortunately makes one and two look antiquated mm -hmm. and kind of pathetic in hindsight, but um, I will take that any day over the airplane sequence. So they drive into a military base, Rev-9's in a helicopter. And he's flying and uh, jumping out of a helicopter, exploding, and then they, oh, let's get in this uh, gigantic military cargo plane. And then they get in the military cargo plane, and then they're just flying it, and then there's jets. Uh, uh. <laughs> that one guy said it was okay that they take this plane, and Grace just like, I hope they don't shoot us down. Anyway, let's talk about the plot. <laughs> and they start talking about the story, and you just stole a military-grade cargo plane based on some guy who was yelling. Yeah. They have the authority to do it, conveniently. And then, uh, oh, Rev-9 steals a different cargo plane <laughs> and rams into, uh, into fighter jets and then just keeps flying. I'm pretty sure any mid-air collision would crash <laughs> both planes, but maybe not. Uh, and then rams into their plane. So then the back of the cargo things open and everyone's floating around. Well, and Arnold's uh, van is in there too. Arnold's van. Because they drove the van into the, yes. the plane as it was taking off, I guess. Is that what happened? Uh, so then, yeah, he crashes his plane into their plane, and then they're, oh, we got, there's a, there's a, there's a Humvee. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, luckily. Oh, with a, yeah, with a parachute on it. We all got to get in the Humvee, and then, they're, yeah, and then the Humvee flies out. And, but it's hanging on the side of the dam. Yeah, well, she's, she's, she's un, Grace is unhooking the parachute while they're falling. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh yeah, she's hanging on to the bottom of like the pallet that the Jeep is on, you've, or you've Humvee's on. Cross the limits of, of Grace's abilities there. Sure. And then they crash the Hoover Dam, I think. Was it Hoover Dam? I think so. It looked like it. And the planes, everything's exploding. And then they, the thing falls off the dam <laughs> to the water. It's ridiculous. But that's why the movie exists, which is the problem. There's a weird thing too, I, I mentioned this earlier, but like, yeah, when they're riding the, the train, when they're sitting on top of the train, they have a long dialogue scene. And I kind of like that they set up that Grace and Sarah Connor don't like each other, but then that's just kind of dropped at a certain point. But I like that initially. But they're talking about, at this point in the movie, you think that Danny uh, is, is going to give birth to the leader of the resistance. Uh, but then halfway through the movie, it's revealed this is the closest they have to a story twist that if she's actually the leader. 
Um, but when they're on that train, then Sarah Connor is like, you're not important, but your womb is. And that just felt weird coming from Sarah Connor, someone who knows what her place was in all of this and, and, and was a very important figure in John Connor's life. It's like you have to completely ignore your own past to make a comment like that. It was really bizarre. Yeah, yeah, like she had no importance other than... Yeah, she's super important. Saved three billion lives. <laughs> You're welcome. I never really felt like I was watching Sarah Connor, and I don't know if that's, one, probably the writing, but also just, like, so much time has passed, and Linda Hamilton's old. It was just, it was yeah. weird. I never felt like I was connected to that character right. from Terminator 2. It's exactly like the Jamie Lee Curtis situation, where an incident from 60 years ago has made them, like, you know, survival nuts. I mean, that makes sense in the More, case of Sarah Connor. Yes, less so Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Like, oh, he's, he's going to get out, come back for me someday. Yeah. 70 years? Oh, it's a guy chased around with a butcher knife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, so you're going to become a survival survivalist nut? You, you do what you have to to make the movie exist. But yeah, take it in a different direction. Like, yeah, the natural evolution from Terminator 1 to Terminator 2 with her going crazy and being in an asylum. Like, I'd be curious to see what happened to her life after Terminator 2, but... Oh, John Connor died, and then she's just the same person for the next 30 years. They should have had Edward Furlong in this. <laughs> Why not? I'm sure he would have appreciated it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm no longer the leader of the resistance? <laughs> I'm, I'm pointless? You'd be happy. No, no robots are trying to kill you. All right. Wouldn't it be funny? Maybe he grew up and became like a like a Mark Zuckerberg billionaire and created like Facebook oh. and then started because he had an AI. interest in technology. Yeah. And, yeah. He actually ended up creating the AI. There you in the go. Future. There's a convoluted twist. And Sarah's got to kill John. Oh my God! Is Stop it? giving him ideas. I just came up with a better movie right now. <laughs> Stop coming up with ideas for future Terminator movies. He's testifying on Capitol Hill like Mark Zuckerberg always does, like defending his uh, his bots and all that. Technology leader John Connor is survived on Capitol Hill. When he's on Capitol Hill, when he leaves, that's when we plant the bomb. <laughs> and there's no robots. And there's no robots? Well, you can't do a Terminator movie with no robots. You know what would be great is like, is if, uh, is if, if he, he has the very first, the T1, and it's like the very first AI prototype that's like kind of like does, you know, the Japanese robots are just like, eh. Oh, do? yeah. And then, and then Sarah Connor just kicks open the door and then just pushes it over, <laughs> and it can't get up. <laughs> it's rolling around on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, would you recommend Terminator Dark Stool? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I would say I didn't hate it. It's kind of like on the fence for me. It was an enjoyable to a certain degree. The first half was really good. And then it just got a little too stupid. <laughs> I really enjoyed that very first action set piece. I thought that was great, starting from... Well, I, I like the pharmacy scene after that, where they're like yeah, trying to... Yeah, all the way to, up until... When Grace is finally just like, fuck it, and she just goes behind the pharmacy and gets yeah. what she needs. Yeah. So. And she was a likable character. Her performance was very like. Yeah. I, they, I think they said, you know, be as human as you can, mm -hmm. and, and 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 I think you connected with that because yeah. she was, like we said, she was vulnerable. She she had a lot of emotions going on, um, and and the actress pulled it off. And because it's like, yeah, don't act like a fucking robot. Act human. I am human. Just enhanced, you know, increased speed and strength. Which means I can rip your throat out if you piss me off, so don't. The worst decision in this Terminator movie was including Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that sounds weird to say. But you gotta put them in. But that, that's, what, that's what weighted the movie down. Yeah. Uh, and, but without them, it would have been a, essentially a soft reboot of The Terminator. 
<laughs> so, Jay, would you recommend Terminator Dark, oh, no, you dark Feces? You. Dark Feces? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's watchable. Uh, I did like Mackenzie Davis quite a bit in it, and that's kind of about it. So, uh, I want to say it was, it would like, I was kind of like, oh, it'll be nice to see Linda Hamilton again. But then, yeah, when you see her and she comes out, the first thing you see is she's got that giant gun and she's, oh, badass action star. And I'm like, nope. I thought maybe they could do something interesting with her character, but nope, they don't. Like I said, C, C plus. We look for the positives, Jay. We're not just poo pooers. Mm. We're not just haters. We're look, nitpickers. Or, Anytime you have a criticism of a movie, it means you're a nitpicker. Right. We are not nitpicking. We are, we are thoughtfully analyzing what works and what doesn't work in, in a movie. And that's why I say C plus slash B minus. Um, because there are things that worked and there are a lot of things that didn't. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's one of those movies where you're just like, mm -hmm. you just want to like go in there and rearrange it's all the pieces. It's frustrating, yeah. yeah. Where you're just like, why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? That really works. No, this doesn't. Yeah. Well, you can, just, you can just feel all the interference, all the different, yes. all the different voices. Yes. You got to do this, do that, yes. put this in there. And you see four screenwriters and nine story by credits. Mm -hmm. and just, ugh, yeah. All for, all for just the simplest story. <laughs> All for Terminator 2, again. All for, I have to protect you from bad thing. Yeah. Or you die and there is no leader. Mm -hmm. That's the plot. And then all the other stuff is just junk. <laughs> it's just visual junk. Yeah. And uh, like you said, the, uh, the previous films, the action scenes service the story. This is the story services the action scenes. It's mm -hmm. complete inverse. So you are a non-recommend. I am a... The hesitant recommend if, if you want to see a couple good action scenes, check it out. But it's very skippable. Batman? <laughs>